Let's design an op-amp circuit that doesn't always obey like a comparator. Here's our general purpose op-amp. It has the non-inverting input and the inverting input, and it obeys this rule. V out will be capital G times the difference between the voltages at the two inputs. Capital G is basically infinity, and we limit our op-amp to supply something like plus five and minus five volts. So if V plus is ever bigger than V minus, the output goes as positive as it can go. And if V minus is bigger than V plus, the output becomes as negative as it can go. Well, if we wire our circuit in a different way, we'll actually be able to do something much more interesting. We'll build an amplifier so that we'll have one input and one output, and we can have the output be some scalar version of the input. That'll take advantage of some simple rules that we call happy op-amp theory. So another thing we, we need to know is that I in, the current at the inputs to the op-amp, is always zero, or about zero. This is important because what we want to know is what is the current doing on the outside of the op-amp? The op-amp itself only observes voltages, and it tries not to use any current from the source. Okay, also knowing that, we're going to build an op-amp circuit with something called negative feedback. Happy op-amp theory is only true when we're in negative feedback. So let's do something with negative feedback. We'll have our op-amp. And negative feedback means that somehow the output can affect the uh, inverting side of the op-amp. So I'm going to take V out and go to a voltage divider, just arbitrarily to 1K resistors. And I'll take the output of the voltage divider and bring it back to the inverting input of the op-amp. And I'll take my input voltage and apply it to the non-inverting pin. So now what I expect is V out is going to be something that's a function of V in. And uh, we'll call them R1 and R2, my two 1K resistors. Before we saw something weird is going to happen where the op amp is going to either go towards plus five or go down towards minus five as it tries to figure out um, what to do with its two inputs. So happy op amp theory says uh, when we're in negative feedback, the two inputs, the non-inverting input and the inverting input, will be equal. So this is the main rule for happy op-amp theory. The other thing we're going to do is sometimes is we'll make sure that the current is zero. So what does this mean? Uh, if this op-amp is a negative feedback, which it is, the op-amp will do everything in its power to make sure that this voltage is equal to this voltage. How does it do that? Well, it's comparing these two voltages and it's controlling its output, and the output is feeding back to one of the inputs. So if it's able to do it, the op amp is trying to make this voltage V in, since it wants these two inputs to be the same voltage. We also know that this voltage is going to be half of V out because I've des designed a divide by two voltage divider. So I know that uh, this point, uh, uh, which we'll call V in because that's the voltage that the op amp wants it to make, is going to be equal to uh, V out uh, times um, it's uh, the top resistor divided by the sum of the two resistors. So that's our voltage divider equation. And if we rearrange it to look like the V out, we'll have V out equals 2 times V in. So we've applied our rule for the op amp will be happy when these two voltages are equal. So we're able to know what this voltage is based on what this voltage is and then we can solve using the voltage divider equation. So happy op amp theory can be used to evaluate a variety of op amp circuits. Just keep in mind the current, no current goes in or out of an input of an op amp. Current, of course, can come in and out of the output. Uh, it will control the output to make the two voltages equal.